Welcome to the Real Mama Pod. I'm your host, Devin. And I'm your host, Kendra. We are real moms. Sharing real experiences. The, the things people don't tell you. Hey, mama, hey. Hi, mommy, hey, hi, hey. <laughs> Wait, you, you've had too much mama juice. Way too much. I haven't even had enough yet. <laughs> hi, mama, hey, hola, what else? Um, <laughs> ciao. <laughs> Um, I'm not doing this with you today. Not today, because <laughs> you and your intro, we do the same thing all the time, and you always confused. Oh, you be hey, mama. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we have an That's amazing good. guest today, as you all can see. Yes, isn't she beautiful? Gorgeous. Thank you guys. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, she's decide, a Guyanese princess. Am I with a banter or am I with a city wing? <laughs> you can banter. Okay, yeah, good. I'll be here with y'all. Yes, and we fuss at each other all the time, so pay us no mind. Okay, that's good. Okay. I'm the referee here. <laughs> okay, friends. So, as, as you all can see, we have a very beautiful, I'm going to call you Guyanese princess. That's yes. accurate. <laughs> Precious here, who is here to talk to us about gaining spiritual and mental wellness and health. She calls herself a mental health muscle mommy. Is that what <laughs> I call myself a generational health muscle mommy. There, okay, there, there we go. go. Generational health muscle mommy. Yeah. And she's she's here to talk to us about that yeah. and what her brand is and how she can help us be better moms to ourselves and to our children. Yeah, oh, I love yeah. That. Yes. yes. Yeah, yes. so welcome, Precious. Thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> I've just been standing on here. <laughs> oh, she's so funny. So if this is your first time listening, I'm your host, Devin. And I'm your host, Kendra. And welcome to the Real Mama Pod. Welcome, welcome. So, Precious, we're going to get right into it. Let's do okay? that. Let's do that. So, briefly tell us about your journey to mamahood. Well, I am a mom of three. I know that everyone chooses motherhood, right? But I really chose motherhood because my bonus baby was my first baby. When Aww. I met my husband, he was a single dad, a security guard, just working hard with his four-year-old, and uh, three at the time. And I fell in love with him, and then I fell in love with her. And so she's I always joke with her. She's the one that didn't mess up my body. <laughs> and she's the one I chose to love. So that was my first journey into motherhood. So going from single and and flew out or flying out myself um, <laughs> to like having a little mini me with me all the time. So it was a very big identity shift, mm -hmm. mommyhood was. And because I lost 75 pounds in my 20s in preparation for like marriage and motherhood and thinking about my future, it was just a little bit of a, a, a multiple shifts in my identity, becoming a bonus mom and then mm -hmm. having my own child and deciding, okay, how is this going to impact my health mm -hmm. yet again? So. We opened up by saying that you are essentially a coach. Right. Like, what inspired you to become a coach? Awesome. Well, for me, I have a educational, you know, there's a lot of great coaching programs out there, a lot of great coaching resources, but I went to college for health science. I decided to, I wanted to be a physical therapist until I realized you had to touch people, and that was just <laughs> not for me. Um, but I had a scholarship to Howard, so I was going to go ahead and finish that out, and ent ended up going into education. And learning more, just discovering more about myself, then got my master's in counseling. So mm -hmm. I just remember my first counseling, my second counseling class, I was like, I want to be a life coach. And she was like, no, you don't. You're a counselor. And I, that actually deterred me for a while because I respect both fields so much. Mm -hmm. And I know all the ins and outs of what the insurance looks like and all of that <laughs> for counseling. Mm -hmm. But there is a vast difference between my trade as a counselor and my business as a coach um, because coaching really takes women into the practical space of what are we doing, how are we changing, what actions are we, how am I holding you accountable very practically, whereas counseling is more of an exploratory process, right? It could take years of digging deep and you're really doing a lot of that work by yourself. Mm -hmm. So I call myself a guide. I really wanted to guide moms. I didn't have that. You know, mm -hmm. my mom being West African, she did what she she did the best she had with what she had, you know. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to being more uh, emotionally aware and spiritually aware and physically aware, and then you have being a millennial mm -hmm. wanting to do everything and mm -hmm. be the most, yeah. I didn't have a guide. Uh, yeah. And I think moms need a guide. Mom need moms need someone to walk alongside them so they don't feel alone and don't feel like just because they're different or just because they don't like being a mom all the time mm -hmm. doesn't mean that they're not a good mom or they're not worthy. Yeah. Ooh, that was good. I saw a post the other day that says, yes, I'm a mom, and I don't always like being a mom. <laughs> mm -hmm. Even though I, I love my kids and I want the best for them and I'm going to do everything I can to provide for them, 
and be the best mom I can be. And right. I also kind of don't really like this. But, you know, if you think about it, though, that's like the one job or the one role that there's no permission to not like it. <laughs> right. Right? Like, you can be a, a – you can ask Kobe Bryant or – rest in peace. You can ask – uh, LeBron James or anybody who has a very high demand job, do they like it all the time? And they'll say, no, you're not like, oh, you're a bad basketball player mm-hmm. or yeah. you're a bad principal or you're a bad uh, president. Mm-hmm. Like, but moms, we this is a role. This is not your, your entire purpose, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Your purpose is tied into it, but there's more to it than just the day-to-day task. So if you don't like the day-to-day task, that makes you normal. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so it, it's important for us to normalize that so then moms can be good. <laughs> at their job because we spend so much time shaming ourselves for not liking it that when, when you do have a likable moment, you're still sitting there like, oh, but I wish I was like this all the time. You know, mm-hmm. there's still that shame. So I just like to normalize and help guide moms into the truth of who they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was good. It really is. So that brings me to my next question then. <clears throat> as a coach and as a mother, why is coaching beneficial, beneficial for mamas? Ooh, we, it, why is it not? It's kind of <laughs> like you go to your personal, you know, you have your personal care physician, you have your dentist, you have lots of us have our lash tech, our hair tech, but coaching is really like the mom that a mom needs. Mm-hmm. We give to everyone. We nurture everyone. But then when it comes down to the nurturing of ourselves, mm-hmm. there's only a certain level of finesse that, that comes with. And your spouse, even your own mom, may not have the um, perspective for that. And so I believe that moms need a coach more than any other, <laughs> yeah. any other, because we do and we give so much all the time. Who is looking into you and looking at your blind spot to say, hey, when's the last time you did this? Mm-hmm. Well, you said you enjoy jump roping. Why haven't you done that? Or you used to play softball. You know there's a softball league up the street. Why don't you join? Mm-hmm. You know, those are things where I can come in and help you see, like, help you mother you a little bit because mm-hmm. you got everyone in their house has a turn. When it comes down to your turn, it's peanut butter and jelly. And falling asleep on the couch. Yeah. 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 And it's sometimes moms feel guilty about pouring into themselves because they feel that they have to continue to make sure their house is good, their kids are good, their partners are good, and whatever else, their jobs are good. But it's it's good to have that guide or that coach to say, you need to do this with yourself. Exactly, exactly. And that's a big part of my framework. The I have the lift framework and the F stands for the freedom mindset. A big part of it is just the mindset that we are not free to do these things. We mm-hmm. have so much guilt and shame around doing anything that doesn't include our kids. And once again, that's the only role that it's not like that. Yeah, Wives do things without their husbands. Husbands do things without their wives. Teachers do things without their students. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. grandmas do things without their grandkids. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to the motherhood role, there's just so much the high standard. And, of course, you carry the child. It was a part of you for that amount of time. But mm-hmm. it's okay to be – you have the freedom – and I'm a Christian, so you have the freedom in Christ to just let that go because yeah. that's not the requirement that is set for you. <laughs> yeah, talk about requirements. Come on. <laughs> that's real. <laughs> I love that perspective. So when you talk about, you know, the success of being a coach, being a guide, like what is your biggest success story when it comes to your profession and what you do to support moms? Oh, man. So that was a good question. I'm so glad I saw that beforehand because <laughs> I don't want to offend anyone. I mean, I could use a young lady that lost 18 pounds in a month, right? That was just like, oh, my God, God bless you. And her doctor was like, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Um, I could use the mom that bought a new wardrobe for her birthday and had not really spent money on herself in years. But I'll use my most recent example from our eight-week program um, she is pretty, from the, uh, from the eye, successful. Master's degree, you know, size six or eight. But she had some parts of her body that she wanted to work on. She did not really exercise, did not really know, like, some of the standard exercises, how you do a proper squat, how you do a proper um, lunge. And in the over a decade, she had been a mom, had never taken a trip by herself. And so when we had our you know, initial onboarding call, she just kind of was like, oh, I'm just open. I just want to lose a few pounds. And it wasn't until about week five. She was like, I didn't know you was going to get my whole life together. <laughs> like, and so it just helped her see that a lot of her identity was rooted in all the things she does for her family mm-hmm. instead of just being there yeah. and being her best. And so her taking that trip with her mom on, you know, for, without guilt and saying, she just clearly explained to her family, like, next trip, it'll be together, but this trip is for me, was, like, the biggest win. I mean, she lost weight, she got healthier, all those things happened, but her being able to take her turn and really not have any guilt about that yeah. is one of my most recent success stories. Yeah, and it sounds like there's 
there is a spectrum of moms getting back to themselves. It's yeah. not always about weight loss. It's not always about going on a girl's trip. It's not always about taking a walk. You know, right. it's there. Every mom has their own. I want to get to this. It doesn't even have to always be back to where you were exactly. before having kids, but accepting who you are now as Kendra, the mom or Devin, yep. the mom or precious, the mom and whatever else you are to the rest of the world. Exactly. So, um, Preach. Yeah. Preach, yeah. preach, preach. Yeah. <laughs> There's a spectrum of things that, you know, we have to learn to accept and grow within our personal lives. Right. And we can't let social media or the world or your, even your parents dictate what that is. So I talked to my mom about igniting your spark. What makes you happy? Mm -hmm. So I wasn't always a nail, get your nails done person. But this 2023 is a get your nails done person, <laughs> yes. right? And I have one of my moms is a basketball mom. Like, she don't care about getting her nails done. So she takes a walk every Sunday and gets Starbucks. Like, you know, everybody is different. And so we can't have these cookie cutter programs or cookie mm -hmm. cutter experiences. I love y'all's podcast because it's so different. You have your different drink. I got mine right here. <laughs> you have your different, you're catering to the person. And I think that's something that we do for our kids. You don't put all your kids in the same activity, right? right? Yeah. You do it based on their talents. And I think that that's how moms should be treated too. Mm. I love that. Yeah. And thank you for that compliment. Girl, y'all a bomb. We found the secret. secret. <laughs> we found the secret. If you yeah. are a mama or a woman in general and you are struggling with your libido, we have found the trick. She O has done the job. We have been more engaged intimately with our husbands. We have had all the fun. And when I tell mm -hmm. y'all the fun, we have had the fun. And guess what? We don't have to put towards so much energy because this no. has done the trick. And if y'all yeah. don't believe us, check out the reviews. Yep. Like check, check the link in our bio. <laughs> and use code MAMA, all caps, for extra discounts. But order it today. <laughs> That's all I can say. Today. today. And like we said, if you don't trust us, read the reviews. Mm-hmm. Take my drink. Well, you know, you are an advocate for generational health, right? Yes. And I love that about your platform and what you're doing for moms all over the world. Can you tell our listeners what generational health is? Yes. It was something, it came from a deep place for me. My, Like I said, I'm an immigrant's daughter. And so in the... A lot of places outside of the Western world is intergenerational living. Mama, grandma, aunties all live in the same house. Everyone's raising the kids. Pretty much, if you if it's your aunt, that's your, you call her mom. Mm -hmm. So like everybody at the same age range is mom, and mm -hmm. then all the great great aunts are all grandma. So mm -hmm. in, in our culture, is so isolated, and the only thing that we talk about generationally is wealth, mm -hmm. <laughs> especially in the black culture. It's like pass something down, leave a legacy, and that's great that we're getting to that place, right, as mm -hmm. with our history. But we don't realize how much we pass down physically, mentally, and emotionally. We go in, we go to a doctor and do our health records or our health history, and it's, you putting, you're checking everything. Mm -hmm. Somebody got high blood pressure. Somebody have cholesterol. My husband has high blood pressure. He's a vegan. Mm -hmm. Like, he's healthy as, as a healthy man now, but it's something that's genetic that's been passed down to him. Mm -hmm. And so as moms, as CDC has proven that the health and fitness of, ki of toddlers mm -hmm. is tied to the health and fitness of their mothers. Ooh. Starting at, as early as a toddler, as, long, as soon as they can walk, they're modeling what normal activity looks like based on their mothers. Mm -hmm. And so we can, that gave me chills. Mm -hmm. So we can make a difference in the next generation. So you don't, maybe right now you're not there. You don't want to lose the weight for you. You like it. You know, I've heard all the time, I like my belly. It's cute. You know, he got hold, something to hold on to. Fine. But... What about the model? What about what are we doing to show our daughters, our sons, like moms don't have to be martyrs. Moms don't have to be broke down, tired all the time. Like we can be healthy and happy and flourish and have hobbies outside of the home. Like that's okay. And so generational health is a lot of things, but it's basically rewriting what your family's health story is mm -hmm. and doing so by saying, this is my new health story. I'm not taking whatever was passed down. I'm not taking it anymore. It's not going to continues to me mm -hmm. wow and being healthy doesn't always mean you look a certain way exactly like you can be healthy and look a way that socially doesn't look healthy right or you can look a, this way and and the rest of the world expects you to have these problems and that those problems it 
it's all about, I like that you talk about the inner mm-hmm. side of, of being healthy and not exactly. the physical outer side of being healthy. Exactly. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, like, my weight right now is the lowest it's been since I've been a mother. But I've been this size before and been less healthy. Right. Ooh. So it's not really about that. And, mm-hmm. you know, like I said with my husband, like, from outside, the man looks healthy, but he has high blood pressure. So the reality is we have to do better for ourselves because we're children of God, because mm-hmm. we have the Holy Spirit within us, because we are carrying a legacy forward. Um, so I love that you said that because I want to make sure that it's very, very clear that we're not doing it for the aesthetic. You're doing it. We're, we're getting fit for life. Like, we have so much to do um, in this world, and we want to feel good doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to do better. You know what? That's it. That's all. It's that's that's <laughs> it. Because it's a journey, right? Like mm-hmm. you're going to. I always tell you, just start. Start. Yeah. If you can just say, "I'm going to walk five minutes a day." Mm-hmm. That's five more minutes than the zero minutes or the five minutes on Instagram. And take the phone with you. Go on. St- <laughs> st- but I mean, the reality is, just start because you think, "Oh, I'm precious. I see you online. You lifting these weights. I wasn't lifting these weights a year ago. Right. This was a new goal for me. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's okay to change and evolve. I love how you said that. The mom mm-hmm. being the new version of yourself right. mm-hmm. today. So. Girl, I'm rooting you on. Now I'm going to be looking at your story. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank yeah, we you. Root, root. We'll incredible. root each other. Yes. 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 And I liked how you talked about the whole mom because that's mm-hmm. important spiritually, physically, mentally, like emotionally. Emotionally. Yeah, if that's we're it. not there and if we're not good to ourselves, we're not good to anyone. Amen. Amen. And that's our husbands, that's, that's our it. kids, that's work. All that ties into a random person in the grocery yeah. store. Exactly. Yes. And then you get the last of that. Yeah. So imagine if you're not good for all those people, then when you get to you, what happens? Mm. Nothing. Nothing. There's literally nothing there. Nothing. It's literally in, on fumes. Fumes. Ashes. I like the way you spun that. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, all those people, the thing about moms, they're going to feel the f- guilt. Right. They're oh, going to yeah. feel the pressure to do, okay, I got to do it for my kids. Mm-hmm. What about you? Like, mm-hmm. you, were, you were there before all of that. And yeah. when all of it is gone, it's going to be you in that bed. Looking up, right. asking yourself. So it's not about, and that's also kind of gloomy, but the reality yeah. is like, it's okay. It's okay to say, I want to do this for me. Yes. And that is absolutely great. That's a great point because those kids grow up. Child. And we boy mamas. And the boys Ooh. go with their wives, unfortunately. <laughs> they don't listen. Look, I'm praying. <laughs> Just come back home. <laughs> Give me one holiday throughout the year, okay? Don't let your wife run your whole life. That's and so I try funny. to be fair with my husband. Like, we split holidays and all because I wanted to come back to me. Exactly. Okay? You put it out there. <laughs> so, yes, they grow up and they get married and they live their lives and they go yes. to college and... Not that they forget about us, but they forget about they us. Ha- they establish their own lives. Yes, so we always have to put ourselves first. And the good moms, they the, the kids really go. Because yeah. you've put so much in them, they don't yeah. really necessarily need to come back to the well as much. So yeah. you're doing all of this. Trust me, you're setting up a very, very well-adjusted human. Mm-hmm. You're going to have a lot of time mm-hmm. on your hands yeah. in a few years because they've you've given and you've poured. So that doesn't mean stop pouring. It just means start pouring in you too mm-hmm. because you don't want to have that crisis of identity when that time comes yeah and I think our generation we saw our moms Mm -hmm. and our grandmas and great aunties Mm -hmm. and and they were obviously very hands-on up with us Mm -hmm. we were the center of their world and I appreciate it and I love them for that and I'm gonna my story is gonna be a little different Mm -hmm. my son I love him to death Mm -hmm. he is at the center of my world Mm -hmm. But mommy's at the center of the world, or of, <laughs> of her world, uh, and and I I want him to to be proud of who I am, not just as his mom, but right. as a woman, as a right. as Kendra, as whomever I am to the rest of the world. Like, we don't really think about that though, and that's the thing. I think that's the thing that as a gener- as a millennial moms and above, or some Gen Zs are getting older now. Um, <laughs> you. Your kids are, you don't realize how much that will shape their identity. Yes. Exactly. I feel like yes. my girls are like, where are you going now? What are you doing now? Yeah. You know, like, this is the mm-hmm. first time I got my makeup done at the house. Mm-hmm. You should see them. The two-year-old's in there watching. Still, still. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I need to get my makeup done every weekend. Yes. <laughs> and still. they see mommy they so doing for mommy. mommy. Yep. And I think, too, that gives them, when they're older, like, 
the whole woman, right? Because yep. you're representing, hopefully, the spouse they'll attract when mm -hmm. they get older, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like my mom just didn't do everything for me. Like, right. I had to be self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. I had to clean up after myself. I had to learn how to cook. I had to learn how to do these things. Right. So when they're off to themselves, like, their woman is just a bonus. It's yeah. not someone to do for them. Exactly. Yeah. And then they learn how to appreciate that woman for taking care of themselves and make it a Absolutely. priority for the woman to take care of themselves. Exactly. Because if we run a racket, when they get a spouse, well, my mom did that. So it, you should do it that too. Is a, yeah. That is a message. And yeah. I'm setting you and your partner your up for up. failure. Exactly, right. exactly. Because so it's only going to get, it's only going to evolve more and more. You right. know, he's going to have in his mind. Okay, when I get my job, part of my budget is a cleaning service once yep. a month. When part of my budget is making sure my wife goes to the spa mm -hmm. because I keep getting chills. Like that is really yeah. a shift, y'all. Like yeah. we're building this generation. Like this is normal, and yeah. for other cultures. It's been very normal. Very normal. Yeah. And so, this and therefore, we're going to bring it, we're bringing it right, we're going to appropriate a little bit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is co this is normal for our culture, and it's okay to really take care of yourselves and to take care of each other. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And like you said, when your two-year-old face lit up, my boys, let me get my hair done or my <laughs> nails done. Hey, mommy, you look so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mommy, what color are you getting today? Like, they're invested. And I, I feel so great yeah. knowing that they notice those things, and I'm just like, I hope I'm raising some boys that are going to be good spouses. They will. They will. One day. Mm -hmm. That is a fear for them to be raggedy. <laughs> yes. I do not want anybody to summer walk with me, y'all. I'm traumatized right. the by that song. <laughs> I am traumatized. <laughs> I'm done. Your mama should have whooped you. <laughs> right. Y'all are not about to be talking about me on the internet like that. Listen, it's not going to be. It's not going to be. I already know it. I already know it. Oh, gosh. That is, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. I'd be damned. <laughs> walk that's around here acting like he had no home training. It's okay. You're going to snatch him right back in the house. And if be right. quickly. Right. Get your... I would, I would tell on you before <laughs> she even come to me. Look, right. little girl, leave him alone. Well, that's a cultural thing for me. Like when we have, when we get married, the the man has to come to the house and tell, mm -hmm. what are you going to do? Who is responsible? He has to come with family members. Like, are you all responsible for if your son doesn't Ooh. do right toward my daughter? Oh wow! And that that I mean, I'm not going to tell accountability. My, it is. I'm not going to tell which brother of mine, but <laughs> they have to go back and say, you told me. You know, that mm -hmm. your son was going to do such and such, and he's not doing it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Into grownness. Right. And so that's a cultural thing, too, that I would love for us as a, a, a society to have, that we're going to continue to hold. It's the whole family unit. I know? love that. Mm. We might have to adopt that. See, that was all script. these are things that we lost, you <laughs> right. know. Exactly. Right. In translation, they, yeah. they still got you it. You know what? We lost our head. Lost Listen, that's a whole, mm, oh, that's a whole other podcast. We need, to do, we need to do a live mm. on that. Yeah, we do. Right, serious. <laughs> do. Listen, Seriously, don't. Yeah. <laughs> don't tip me with a good time. Right. Because we'll have Listen, a good old time. We connected. Now we're going to be thinking of all kinds of things. So do you, you talk about your daughters just essentially watching you blossom and be the mom and woman that you are mm -hmm. do you hope that they follow in your footsteps absolutely if, if, if god decides and if they decide to be moms you know that's number one yeah. mm -hmm. I'm, i am not gonna be telling nobody to bring me no grandkids i'm gonna tell you do whatever god has called for you to do so if you travel in the world and you decide that that is not the call in your life then don't do it right but if it is um absolutely and i want them to just be okay with changing you know, whatever you just you can you have the freedom to change. You have the freedom to evolve. You have the freedom to obey what what mission you are on, mm -hmm. right? So um, I will have to have to surrender that as well because there are going to be decisions they make that I might not understand. But um, my mom said the other day, "I'm so glad I didn't, I didn't stress you out about your major." In college, because I was a physical therapist. Right. You know, I was going to be a doctor. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, in Guyana culture, I was going to be a doctor of physical therapy. But now she's like, this is kind of better. You know, <laughs> like what you're doing now. So you just have to open. I do want them to just feel fulfilled and to obey mm -hmm. the Lord and to love him and to love themselves. And everything else, as long as they're bold about it and um, unapologetic. I'm, I'm there for it. Being bold about it. Yes, yeah, I love that. Living it. out loud. Confident. Out loud. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And who they are and who they're becoming. Yeah. yeah. And evolving. You said the change, be open to change, flexible to that. Yeah. That's important because those are things that I can't say that I grew up right. like, mm -hmm. knowing. Like, I wasn't set up for success yeah. when it comes to that. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I lived a very structured lifestyle and being an adult has forced me to be flexible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's difficult, especially in our society. I mean, it's not. There's no. 
There are not that many 30-year jobs anymore. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, no. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know if they set them up that way. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. They look down on you if you stay there that long. But right. the reality is, I just, if, but if they want a 30-year job, fine. Yeah. If they still I exist at that you. time. But I'm just, um, I'm just excited because I'm, they're seeing me fail forward. They're seeing me try things and then retry them. Mm-hmm. Um, they're seeing me in launch seasons where it's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And when the new client books, they're like, yes. You know? <laughs> so we're, we're, we're in this together. And so, yes, I definitely pray that they um, do take care of themselves. And I, prepare, I am prepared to be the grandma that helps lighten their load, you okay. know, that helps mm. take off some things from them so that they can go and live and do things too. I love that. That was good. That was good. So to that mama who has lost her overall motivation to thrive, what you got for her? One, that's my mama. Mm-hmm. Look, look me up. <laughs> um, two, you're not alone. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of moms. I mean, I don't have the statistics, mm-hmm. but a lot of moms do feel like they have either lost themselves in motherhood or have let themselves go. Mm-hmm. And so you're not alone. I think that's number one. I think motherhood can be very lonely. I know mm-hmm. motherhood can be very lonely because mm-hmm. I've experienced it. It was very low times for me after my first, in between my first born and my second born. And I said, when I get through this, I'm going to create something for moms that don't have to feel like this alone. Right. And so that's what's happening for me. You know, you're not alone and it's, it's going to get better. Mm-hmm. Just don't feel like you have to Face it alone. You don't feel like you have to muscle through. Get the help you need. Get counseling. Get therapy. Get a coach. Um, move your body in whatever way. Yoga, Pilates. Do a dance class. A lot of those endorphins will start to f- shake you out of your lack of motivation before the actual motivation kicks in. Mm. And then the last thing is, it's still in you. It's not gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that that's what you know. We are we are spiritual beings, so it's not nothing left you. It's still there. It's just kind of it's, it's lying <laughs> dormant. It's a little deep down in there. So you're gonna have to shake it up. You know, tell somebody that can help you walk with you through that. Because once again, once you start doing the thing, the energy to do the thing starts to kick in. So mm-hmm. that's what I would tell her. You're not alone, boo. We got you. I love uh, that. Yes, we do. Families, are y'all looking for some fun to get into this summer? If so, we have the perfect trip for you. Yes, KT Trouble and More is back with another great trip. Yes. Yes. July 13th through July 16th, you and your family can pack up and go where, friend? To Punta Cana. Yes. Yeah. Hey. So hit up Stephanie for all the details, but this trip is very affordable and it fits a family of four. Absolutely. And guess what? You will be in Punta Cana for four days and three nights under the sunny weather, the breeze, the ocean, all the fun. So make sure you check out KT Traveling More for more details. Sign up today before it's too late. I love that. So we are motivated mamas. So that yes. means <laughs> it's time for some mama juice, y'all. Oh. What, what are we drinking on, friend? What are we drinking on? Oh, I first of all, I have enjoyed sipping on this mm-hmm. drink. It's really good like to me. Spicy. Whoever made you this like idea. It? Yeah, I actually, surprisingly, I like it. Yeah, who made this idea? I am it's very really a good idea. Whoever suggested this is a great person. What? Mama's <laughs> spicy. <laughs> let's yeah, get so into let's, that. Let's, let's get some into credit who when credit is due. Right. Let's do that. So one of the things we do is we curate drinks based on the, the personality of our guests, the, the what they like, and we ask Precious, like, what do you typically like to drink? Sis says she likes spicy margaritas. I said, okay, we got something we can work with. I love a good spicy cocktail, too. Mm -hmm. At first, when I saw that there were, like, jalapenos in a drink, I'm like, what is that? And then my husband, he's always a test dummy. He ordered it, and he was like, babe, this is actually really good. And when I tried it, I said, it is. So Mm -hmm. I have grown to like spicy drinks, too. So let me tell y'all what's some precious drink. First of all, it's called... Push it. <laughs> and the reason push why it's called yeah. ah, push it <laughs> is because I don't know. Precious vaguely mentioned that she works out and she goes hard. She be uh, in her story. She be, I mean, pushing it to push the it. limit. Like we should low key should have called her push, push it. it. Rick Ross. <laughs> push it. Cause that's what it be looking like in the videos. Cause sis be pushing it. But this drink is called ad push it. And it was inspired by precious. Oh. And what she likes. I and jumped what again. Has. I should let y'all say that. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> no, no. So it has one and a half ounces of tequila. Mm-hmm. It has juice uh, from a fourth of a grapefruit. 
It has a whole lime juice, fresh. Now, y'all know I like fresh. It has a half an ounce of maple agave syrup. It's healthy. (laughs) And it has a fourth an ounce of candied jalapenos. Oh, this is a healthy drink. (laughs) I think tequila is one of the lower calorie alcohols, Mm -hmm. but that is the cocktail version. If you don't drink alcohol or you are not able to drink alcohol right now, we do have a mocktail version. And it is the fourth of a grapefruit, the whole lime, a half an ounce of the maple agave syrup, and the candy jalapenos. Mommies who are pregnant can still have jalapenos. We looked it up. <laughs> oh, yes. That's awesome. I'm yes. sure a little bit of club soda will make you feel like you had the... There you um, go. There you go. What's go it called? It was Come on. Right. It was, it was right. You know, that, that's, I've done... I had My coach is probably like, what you over there drinking? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, that that always makes it give a little fizz like there is yeah, alcohol in there. But this look. is delicious. And you, cheers to you guys for this Wait, idea. Let's so, do a yeah. cheers. Let's cheers. Do to generational yes. health, yes. mamas, and happiness, and living the soft life, because that's what we deserve. Yes. That's right. You're worthy of it. Mm-hmm. You're worthy of it. So what's going on in Mama's, in Mama's Corner? Corner? We do have a letter, so thanks for <laughs> okay. writing in. Um, and so if this is your first time listening, Mama's Corner is our opportunity to connect with our guests a little bit more. Um, and our listeners, they kind of write in and ask for advice or may have mm-hmm. a mama hack or may have a drink suggestion. Mm-hmm. It's just our opportunity to connect with our listeners. And it's my favorite segment. And mm-hmm. I do check the emails. <laughs> And stalk them. And so what I try to do is cater our subjects to whatever episode we may have. Okay. Okay. So for this Mama's Corner discussion, it's real quick. It says, what are some ways busy mamas can become more disciplined to ensure success? So I think this would be perfect for precious. Oh, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. This is a discipline is a very it's very important. There's spiritual discipline mm-hmm. and there's physical discipline. And so I think that the main thing is to find spiritual discipline first. If you can figure out a way to center yourself, you know, mm-hmm. starting your morning with meditation. I have in my eight week program, I teach them a meditation method, but making sure you start the morning not thinking about what you have to do, mm-hmm. but just thinking about who God is, who you are, where how you, where you are. So check in with yourself regularly. That discipline will kind of set the tone for the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, I have been, I had a lot of shame on that growing up in the church. I'm like, I need to sit down for an hour, read my Bible. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I put that thing on audio in the car. Mm-hmm. You know, just find the little ways to feed yourself spiritually. Mm-hmm. And then that will lead to physical discipline. Um, as well as well as for any type of goal, right? Mm-hmm. Just start somewhere. Um, start with something that you can do. A lot of times we are we don't do this to our kids anymore, but we grew up with people giving these really high expectations for kids and then disciplining them or punishing them for not ac- accomplishing it. And I think that we are like that to ourselves. Mm-hmm. We set this ridiculous goal and then we don't do it and we punish ourselves or we self-sabotage ourselves into a shame spiral. Don't do that. Pick something that you can start with. So if you're trying to start a business, if you're trying to lose weight, if you're trying to get healthier, just start, you know, break that goal down mm-hmm. so that you can accomplish something, feel the confidence, feel the reward, and now you're in a positive reinforcement cycle. Mm-hmm. And then you can add to it and add to it and add to it. Mm-hmm. And then you will be a disciplined person. Look mm-hmm. at that. Yeah. But um, don't, you know, don't treat yourself like <laughs> we've been, we were, some of us were raised treating ourselves like, Give yourself a starting point, ground yourself spiritually, and then the rest of the discipline will start to flow. That's awesome. I love that. I like the positive spin you put yeah. at the end because I'm I like, you know, if I'm if I don't want to do something, yeah. <laughs> usually I'm like, mm, not doing it. But if I build in these ways for me to kind of celebrate the success yeah. after I finish, that inspires me to just keep going. Right. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> this is gonna sound like such a fat girl moment, but it's Girl Scout cookie season, right? Oh my God, I have them in my house right and now. And yeah, I'm, I'm a thin mint girl. I love my thin mints. I put them in the fridge. They're vegan. And <laughs> <laughs> I was working the other day and there was something I had to do. I didn't feel like doing it. I wanted those cookies. Mm-hmm. I said, you know what? I'm going to finish this and then I'm going to reward myself with the cookie. You know what? <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever, it whatever takes. Whatever works. Whatever it takes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know you deserve them cookies whether you did it or not. <laughs> so that's, that's the coach of me. Like, whether you did it or not, you go ahead and eat uh, that cookie. But yes, that's exactly what you do. Yeah. You know, we do that with our kids. So it could be anything, you yeah. know. Mm-hmm. Um, it could definitely be anything. So I think that's great. 
fundamental food. things. Fundamental yes. things. Awesome. The small things that we do for our kids. Start doing them for yourself. Yeah, Precious, yeah. this is great. So if people want to know more about you, want to follow you, find you, yeah. Where could they do that? Well, come to the best side of the internet, outside <laughs> of the real mama pod. <laughs> Precious K. Williams on mostly all platforms. K is for Kofi, my dad's name, my dad's maiden name, my maiden name. Um, and then my website is simplypassionatelife.com. Um, you can backslash generational health if you want to know more about our eight-week program. It's the premier live eight-week program for moms. So we are okay. taking a faith-based, faith-based approach to help moms lighten their loads, okay. ignite their spark, embrace a freedom mindset, and take their turn so they can really flourish in motherhood, look good, feel good. Um, so it's a small group uh, cohort. is live, so they get to talk to me every week for those eight weeks. And it's, it. um, it's great, and I really love doing the work that I do. So follow me, and um, let's connect. I'm so excited that you guys yes, have me do. on here. Yeah. And we will, of course, have all of this information in the description box. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, until next time. Bye. Bye, Mama. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us at The Real Mama Pod. Yes, every Thursday night. Y'all could be anywhere. But you're hanging out with us. Yes, and we love it. So, friend, where can they find you? They can find me anywhere they like. Mm-hmm. I'm on Instagram at Kendra Ferg underscore. And I'm also on Facebook, Kendra Ferguson. Okay. What about you? And you can reach me at Deb Grace underscore. Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook, Twitter, mm-hmm. all of that at the Real Mama Pod. Pod. Yeah, so make sure you follow us. If you want to learn more about Kendra and I, you can uh, check out our website where we have Mama merch. Hey, you can see our little sweatshirt. Right. Yeah. we are wearing our Mama merch. Yeah, we have sweatshirts, hats, necklaces. We also have Rich Auntie merch. Um, so you can purchase that at www.therealmamapod.com. <laughs> We're so corny. I know.